You may know her as Alice Hagen, but she was born Alice Egan on May 28, 1872 in Halifax, the daughter of Margaret Kelly Egan, born 1844 in Halifax, pictured here, and Lieutenant Colonel James Egan, born 1841 in Cardiff, Wales. Alice's father owned an outdoor sporting goods shop in downtown Halifax with hunting and fishing supplies. Thomas Egan also specialized in taxidermy and won the gold medal at the Paris Exhibition for his collection of Canadian birds in 1900. According to his obituary in the newspaper, Mr. Egan was one of the best known citizens of Halifax, as he had been most prominent in militia circles, retiring some 16 years before his death after serving a term as head of the 63rd Halifax Rifles. Margaret, Alice's mother was an amateur artist who enjoyed painting and was an early artistic inspiration to Alice. She encouraged Alice to draw and paint. The following is a clip of an interview with Alice Hagen from November 25th, 1965. When I was a little child, you see, about four or five years old, we could sit on our kitchen table and we could see right out into Halifax Harbor and we could see little boats coming in. Uh, as I used to draw little boats, I was very much interested in vessels that were sailing in North Halifax. And my mother taught me by giving me pencil and paper. She didn't uh, like my slates much. I used to get clean pieces of paper to draw on, and uh, boats are one of the things I used to draw. In 1882, at the age of 10, Alice started attending the Mount St. Vincent Academy, which was a school for girls run by the Sisters of Charity. While attending the academy, Alice was encouraged to pursue her artistic interests. She graduated from the Mount St. Vincent Academy in 1888. There wasn't any question of art school or anything at that time. The people in, this, in the neighborhood wanted me to teach her children. I said I couldn't teach because I, I didn't know. I hadn't had any instruction. I didn't feel that I was capable of teaching anybody else. I took on two of the boys first. I took on two boys, and then I got a couple more. I had about five children that I had there that were a few years younger than myself. They used to come into my mother's sitting room, and I used to teach them to the paint. Against her father's wishes, Alice started her professional art education in 1893 at the Victoria School of Art and Design in Halifax now known as the Nova Scotia College of Art and Design, and sold her watercolor paintings to pay her tuition. I didn't get to the art school until Mr. Harvey's last year. He was an instructor in the technical college. He took me up to see Mr. Harvey. He took up something to show him. Well, I was about 15 then. Mr. Harvey, when I went in, says, where do you want to begin? I said, at the beginning, of course. There was not, not another way to say it. He just took me in the other room and gave me a square to draw, just to get the perspective. During her time at Victoria School of Art and Design, she began exhibiting her work and winning medals. Throughout her early life, Alice focused on the art of China painting, which was not taught at the Victoria School of Art and Design. Fortunately for Alice, Bessie Brown had a China painting studio in Halifax, and Alice was able to learn from her. Using already made blank pieces of pottery that have been fired with a clear glaze, the blank is painted by the artist with overglaze colors that are fired at a low heat. During the mid to late 1890s, Alice had the amazing opportunity to travel to New York to study with Adelaide Aslop Robineau, a renowned artist and China painter. Alice also studied different China painting techniques with Dorothy Warren O'Hara at the Osgood Art School in New York. After only three years of her formal art education, she was one of 16 artists chosen in 1896 by the Women's Art Association of Canada to hand paint a Royal Dalton China dishware set, known as a dinner service. This state dinner service was a commemorative dishware set to celebrate the 400th anniversary of John Cabot's voyage to what is now known as Canada, and was to be used for banquets in Rideau Hall, the official residence of the Governor General of Canada in Ottawa, Ontario. Alice was a perfect choice for the task of painting the 12 game plates featuring different pictures of game birds found in Canada because of her father's outdoor sporting goods shop resources. 
she ended up basing the designs of her plates off of pictures found in Audubon's Birds of America, a book from her father's library. Alice used the commission earned to open her own studio in downtown Halifax and started working and teaching China painting from her studio. After completing her program around 1898, Alice remained at the Victoria School of Art and Design to teach China painting over the next two academic years. Alice received 70% of the income produced by the course and was even paid an extra $2 each month to teach her classes from her own studio. In 1900, the China painting class was moved to the Halifax Ladies College and Alice again accepted the position, but the move did not work out and Alice stopped teaching the course and the class did not continue. Alice Egan married John Clement Hagen in 1901. As a wedding gift to John, Alice purchased two small ceramic pins and painted a portrait of herself on one and John on the other. And they had two daughters, Rachel and Kathleen Hagen, born in 1902 and 1905. John was very supportive of Alice's career and even tried his hand at painting these small buttons. Alice continued her artistic career even after her marriage. She became very well known for her hand-painted pieces, including china and clear glass. In 1910, Alice's husband John was moved to Jamaica through his work in the Halifax and Bermuda Cable Company. The Hagen family lived in Jamaica until they came back to Halifax in 1916. Even in this new environment, Alice continued to create and teach China painting in Jamaica and even held fundraising sales during the First World War to support the Red Cross. For her contribution to Jamaican art and her support of the Red Cross, Alice was the first woman to be awarded the bronze in 1914 and silver in 1916 Musgrave medals by the government of Jamaica. The influence of her time in Jamaica is particularly visible in the parrot vase that Alice created after returning to Nova Scotia years later. At one point, Alice's mother, Alice herself, and Alice's daughter, Rachel, were all painting China at the same time. It is interesting to note that the Hagen family was living in Halifax during the famous Halifax explosion on December 6, 1917. The explosion was the result of two ships colliding in the Halifax harbor, one of which was transporting explosive cargo for the First World War. Alice was almost severely injured by the blast. She had just finished greeting a milkman at the front door of her porch and had stepped back into her kitchen when the shockwave from the blast shattered the glass of the porch. Had Alice been inside the porch when the blast occurred, she may have been killed or blinded by the shards of glass, as many were that day. When John Hagen retired in 1930, he and Alice went on an approximately year-long vacation to Europe and traveled to areas including England, France, Portugal, and Italy. This gave Alice the opportunity to visit China manufacturers, which planted a seed for her to learn how to make her own pottery as well. When the Hagens returned from their trip to Europe, they decided to move to Mahone Bay, Nova Scotia. Alice purchased a Mahone Bay home in 1931 that was rather unique. The house was the only one in Mahone Bay at the time that was made of hydrostone bricks, which became popular after the Halifax explosion. The house still stands today. Alice's husband, John, became involved in the town of Mahone Bay and served on the town council and as the mayor of Mahone Bay from 1940 to 1944. After years of purchasing blanks to paint, Alice became very interested in making her own pottery. She learned fundamental pottery techniques, such as how to use the potter's wheel, from Charles Prescott, who owned a small industrial pottery in Fairview, Nova Scotia. Alice was able to learn how to use Nova Scotian clays from Robert Prescott, who lived in Lance, Nova Scotia. She became very focused on finding and promoting local clays such as this one from Granville Ferry, Nova Scotia. During this time, she traveled all over Nova Scotia looking for clay deposits, and by 1948 had conducted at least 100 tests on local clays, such as this one from Londonderry, Nova Scotia. She was ahead of her time in terms of the shop local movement. 
Her china painting styles and techniques had varied so much that it's no surprise that her pottery techniques varied as well. Some pieces were thrown on the potter's wheel. Others appear carved from a piece of clay. And she also used the slip cast technique, where a piece was made and then molded so that liquid clay could be poured inside to create multiple pieces more quickly. She was most likely inspired by the agate ware or marbling technique during her trip to Europe, as she developed her own version that Alice named Scotian Pebble Ware. This type of agate ware pottery is unique because pieces of clay that are already colored are used in the construction of the piece rather than having colored glazes or other decoration added after construction. Alice would often use green, white, and blue colored clays for her Scotian Pebble Ware. She combined the colored clays and then threw them on the pottery wheel to form the shape of the piece. This technique resulted in different colored clays being visible on both the outside and inside of the piece. Alice spent much of her time after coming to Mahombe teaching others the techniques that she had learned and developed over a lifetime of work. The cement basement of Alice Hagen's home was transformed into a workshop for her pottery and a studio was put together in a room on the second floor. There are various photos of Alice teaching classes in her basement. She used her studio in Mahone Bay to teach her skills to many people. Alice's pottery classes were mainly attended by female teachers and nuns and other local women in Mahone Bay area. Alice also developed a pottery course that was certified by the Nova Scotia Department of Education, which she taught in Mahone Bay, Lance, and Annie Ganesh. Alice's class was even highly praised by Dr. Sexton, president of the Nova Scotia Technical College at the time. He stated that, They had done so extraordinarily well in their class in 1938 that I did not think they could advance an equal amount in another month's instruction. The exhibition at Mrs. Hagen's has demonstrated, however, that these students have accomplished just as much, if not more, in their advanced projects than they did in their first course. According to an article in the Journal of Education, Successful attendance of one of Alice's classes was considered a full summer school credit for the Nova Scotia Technical College. The first year students, the elementary group, studied clays and where to find them, how to prepare them. Alice also taught a group of nuns with the purpose of having them prepared to teach their new pottery and china painting skills to others through a special project during the 1930s. She continued to do oil and watercolor paintings, but she was most well known for her ceramic painting and decorative techniques. She became very talented at the lusterware technique, which is particularly tricky as the paints are all brown and only show their color after the piece has been fired in a kiln. This required several sessions of applying color and then firing to see the outcome before any given luster piece was completed. Sometimes Alice would paint and fire several layers in succession to get the colors just the way she wanted. Here are a few bottles of luster paints, and as you can tell, they all appear brown, even though one is labeled orange and another is labeled lavender. Alice Hagen continued making pottery well into her 90s. In an article in Toronto's Star Weekly, September 15, 1962, titled A Canadian Worth Knowing, John Hagen, who Alice called Jack, stated that he worried a little about his wife, Alice. Every morning when I'm lying in bed, I can hear her quietly rustling about downstairs in her workshop. At the bottom of the article, they stated, In addition to her unique Scotian pebble pottery, Mrs. Hagen is skilled in china painting and lusterware glazing. She has lived to see some of her work become historically valuable for its record of Nova Scotia's past. John Hagen supported Alice's artistic career and took over the cooking in their later years so that Alice could focus on teaching and working on her art. John Hagen passed away on September 20, 1964, and Alice Hagen passed away in 1972, just four months shy of her 100th birthday. But her impression on the artistic community, Mahone Bay, and the world lives on through pieces of her art and the pottery skills she taught so many other women in Nova Scotia. Pictured here from left to right is Mrs. Hankinson, Mona Strum, Mrs. G. Mater, Annie Gray, Elva Johnston, Alice Hagen, Helen Strum, 
Claudia Meisner, Helen Ernst, Loretta Fancy, Irene Ernst, Helen Shortliff, Florence Vaughn, and Elsie Mosier. We've included in this video two pieces by two of the students pictured here, Irene Ernst and Elsie Mosher. Because she taught so many people who went on to teach others, the ripple effect of Alice's career is likely very large. For example, Sister St. Philip was one of Alice Hagen's early students. Sister St. Philip became the director of Mount St. Bernard School of Pottery in Antigonish from 1947 until 1966, and then later worked with displaced coal miners helping to establish the Mad Potters, who were known for black pottery that was made from local clay. Like Alice, Sister St. Philip was very involved with her community. She taught adults and children. Alice believed that pottery should be taught in public schools. She knew that her own interest had begun when she was just a little girl, and if children were given the supplies and opportunity to learn various artistic skills, they would have a variety of career opportunities where those skills would be helpful. I taught those children to draw, uh, you know, just the people, the kids on the next door neighbors. The two Joe's boys were both good. John did very, very well with colored photography. He painted the things. He took the photographs and painted them. Painted in color. In color. And he had beautiful work. And he made quite a name for himself. And one of the other pupils who went to the States and she went with them and worked. They worked together. They had a business and a good business. Then uh, the other boy, Fred, uh, the one that could draw so well, he, would, he went on to study and he went to the technical college. And later on, he was out here up in Ottawa drawing forts and things for the government. So uh, those, th that many children out of that bunch drew their lives, life's work from just from uh, sidewalk <laughs> construction. Yeah. The reason I, I'd like to tell that is it, it shows what people might do. Alice's ability to decorate and create pottery using a variety of techniques really showcases her artistic ability and her creativity. And her love of pottery and the desire to share the skills with others greatly touched the lives of many people. If you or someone you know has a piece by Alice Egan Hagen, feel free to email a photo of the piece to info at mahonebaymuseum.com